You know, Wayne, uh, I have a big fascination with audience etiquette. I, I saw Oscar Peterson a few years back, and there was somebody who was drunk in the crowd who started you know, yelling and stopped the show. Like, what has been your worst experience performing with someone who may have been drinking? I, well, I've, I've had a lot of uh, experiences with people who drink at my shows, but uh, <laughs> as far as bad experiences in terms of hecklers, uh, I don't think I've ever had one that uh, I couldn't handle. Uh, and, and that's just by virtue of coming up through the lounges. You have everything happen to you in those lounges that could ever happen on stage. I had people die in the audience. Uh, I've had people had seizures ringside. And I think in terms of the worst thing that I could think of, it would be the seizure thing. Because the lady was absolute front and center ringside. Uh, it caused me to develop a little sign language with my lighting guy uh, where I just say to him, when I use this line, he knows that there is a problem in the audience that I have seen or am aware of uh, that he hasn't. And I will say, just give me one spotlight and I will walk as far away from the problem and take the audience's attention with me so that the, the me medical people can get to the person. But I had a gentleman die in our audience. Uh, his uh, daughter had brought him to the show uh, on a gurney uh, with the um, oxygen tanks and everything. Passed away halfway through the show. Um, security was gonna take him out uh, after the paramedics had arrived and his daughter wouldn't let him, and let them, and she said he wanted to see this show, and if he has to go, it's gonna be in this show. And so he stayed there the, throughout the rest of the show, and they carried him out and took him home. So I've, you know, there isn't much that could happen that I, I haven't been through. I think yeah, the next worst thing might be a, a, an inebriated lady because you can't say the things to a lady that you can say to a guy who's drunk, you know. Right. <laughs> you, know you know, I loved your, your appearance on L.A. Law a few years ago. Thank you. Uh, you played an attorney. Um, you know, with your performing career, has the performing cost you a lot of acting roles that you may have wanted to take? Absolutely. Uh, simply because so many acting roles are cast at the last minute. Uh, most of the acting roles I have done have been written for me and therefore we could accommodate them in terms of scheduling. Uh, but uh, there have been some major films that I was not able to do that I was asked to do. And it just breaks my heart, but uh, as much as I love acting, uh, I would never give up the onstage performing uh, because that really keeps me honest. Uh, and you get immediate feedback. I mean, you know if, if what you're doing is acceptable and you know if it's not, they tell you pretty quick. And so, uh, yeah, I have lost some, but uh, uh, luckily, I've been able to do the ones, by and large, that I wanted to do. You know, once again in this, you, you demonstrate your great sense of humor. Uh, were there, uh, were the writers and producers a little bit wary of approaching you, whether or not you'd be willing to poke fun at yourself uh, with this? Uh, I think there might have been in the beginning, uh, before a certain gentleman who became the executive producer, uh, Jerry Weintraub, became involved. He was my former manager at one time before he gave up managing artists and went into producing films. And so uh, when they went to him with the idea, he said, Wayne will love it. He's the last guy in the world to take himself serious. So uh, he was right, and, and he knew me very well. So, uh, but we still had to be careful with it, you know, because when it's Wayne Newton playing Wayne Newton, uh, you have to be careful that you don't cross that moral and principle boundary that mid-America uh, frowns on, as I do frankly. And, and I'm a newlywed, and, and I didn't want to go through another nasty divorce, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the touching the hair thing, uh, the, the scene with Randy Quaid, I, of course, am jealous of anyone who has hair, but uh, does anyone in real life ever dare do that at all? Oh, sure. You can't imagine the amount of times that I am going through an airport or just walking, you know, somewhere, and invariably, and by, usually it's a lady. You know, I will be by them, and the thing I feel is somebody just kind of grabbed my hair like that. I don't know if they expect it to come off or what, you know, but uh, it happens more times than you would think. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you very much, sir. Okay.